Good morning, Allison. How are you doing today? Good. How are you doing? Absolutely fantastic. You have become that person that is connected to travel. And I think that you're so important to all of us who, who want to be introverts and stay home and not really go anywhere but the grocery store. Oh, thank you so much. I can't imagine the time and energy that you put into put this book together because, my God, I mean, it's everywhere. It is the world. It is the world at your fingertips. And what I love about it is for those people who don't want to go anywhere, you can still travel from your armchair. The beautiful photography throughout, it allows you to really immerse yourself in these places and the storytelling as well. You really get a sense of all of these destinations. And I do hope it inspires everyone to pick at least one destination, whether it's a drive away or a plane ride away to go somewhere, because these are truly destinations of a lifetime. Well, this this book is definitely for my neighbor because they Ken and Luma will just pick up and just take off and go anywhere in the world. And and I cannot wait to sit down and just watch their eyes explode because this book is everything that they are. Because And they're not the only ones. People are doing it all over the planet. They are. And, you know, I think people, when you have Wanderlust, it takes one trip to really inspire you, and then you're off and you're going and going. And what I love about this book is... We went through 10 years of best of the world content from National Geographic, which we started publishing in 2012, both in the magazine and online. And this is the evergreen best of the world. These are tried and true destinations that will be best of the world for years to come. And so you don't have to get to them today to make sure you hit it in the right moment. You have a lifetime to to make these bucket lists and to get there and to plan for these adventures. And I think truly you're going to find something for everyone within these pages. North Carolina is a major part of this book. I mean, you did some stuff on Asheville as well as Chapel Hill. And, and you know, people that have never been there need to go there because, I mean, it really is an experience. They always call it the Hollywood of the East Coast. Yes, exactly. And, you know, that's a, another favorite part about this book. When people think best of the world, they think you have to go so far away from home. But you don't. Some stuff is right down the street. It's a drive, a train right away. And Asheville and the University of North Carolina are two examples of that. Asheville is really up and coming as a destination. University of North Carolina, we put in our top 10 list of slam dunk college towns to get to (laughs) in the United States. And I think it fits that bill perfectly. Um, And so there's some surprises in there that I think would um, make people really stop and say, huh, I didn't realize I could have a best of the world experience so close to home. Yeah. One of of the big shockers, I love the way that you broke it up into groups with the majestic nature escapes, the family getaways, the cultural hotspots. I like the way that you guys always do that. You break it up and put it in groups. Yeah, and you know, I think the reason that that has become so appealing is people travel for a very specific reason. Most people don't go, oh, I just want to go to this place because it sounds cool. They want to go because they either want a really awesome wildlife experience or nature experience. They want to have the best food in the world. They want to explore a city. And so we broke this book up into chapters that allow the type of traveler you are to come forward and be the focus. So let's say you are an adventure seeker. One of my favorite places in this book to send you if you love adventure. Is, is Ecuador in South America. Oh, wow. It is an adventure capital. You know, New Zealand's an adventure capital. I would say Ecuador is right up there with you. Um, there's biodiversity. There's a cloud forest you can go to. You can have experiences in Ecuador's part of the Amazon. Um, when I was in Ecuador, I went to a part of the country called Baños, and I did waterfall repelling. I did oh, mountain biking. Wow. I did zip lining. I did whitewater rafting. So if you're an adrenaline junkie, consider Ecuador on your list um, along along with those known spots like Costa Rica, like New Zealand, like Hawaii, because it can top that list too. So what does kite surfing do to your adrenaline? Kite surfing is a great one. We have kite surfing in Teresa, Spain. It's a kite surfing capital. Um, the conditions are just perfect for it. I have yet to try kite surfing. I think it's a skill that you have to master, but if you love it, that's the place to do it. And if you've never done it or you don't want to try it, it's also just fun to watch from the shoreline if you want to sit on the beach and watch the kite surfers. It's really beautiful to see. You know, so many people go up to New York City uh, to to be on, you know, to watch Broadway, to experience the big city life, or just to, to hear music at, at at the big concert halls. But you give us a, a tour here that I've never heard of before, but it sounds so delicious. It's a foodie tour in New York. 
Yeah, you know, New York is definitely a foodie capital of the world. And part of the reason it is is because there's so many international cuisines that you can find authentically in New York City. Um, New York City is a melting pot, so the restaurants really represent that. So we can this foodie tour takes you from dim sum in Chinatown to Michelin-starred restaurants around New York City. And I think that's a really great uh, destination if you love to travel for food, which who doesn't love to travel yeah. for food and have an enjoyable experience while they're eating their way through a place. The book is so huge, and I want I want the less experienced traveler to understand that you guys at National Geo, you make it so easy with your tips for those that don't get around as often. Oh, thank you. Yeah, you know, we really want to make sure people feel like it's not that hard to travel, that, you know, start with baby steps. Like I said, take that first road trip somewhere to a different state, a different part of your own state with some of this. Maybe for your first international trip, go somewhere that's not as far, like Costa Rica, where it's easy to get to, it's not as expensive, and build up to those bucket list worthy destinations. Because I promise once you start, you're not going to want to stop. With so much uncertainty and change going on in the world right now, I I swear to you, this book is the perfect thing for everybody and every age group, because get lost in this world and ignore what you're seeing on social media. You know, I agree with that. It's a really good anecdote to what's going on in the world right now, and it really highlights the beauty of the places around the world as well as all the different cultural cultures and traditions and people around the world. So I think it's a really uh, beautiful testament to the beauty of the world around us. Even if you're not able to go just flipping through these pages will inspire you and showcase how diverse and how gorgeous and breathtaking and unique our planet is. Absolutely. Please come back to this show anytime in the future. Allison, the door is always going to be open for you. Oh, thank you so much. And thank you for having me. Well, you'd be brilliant today. Okay. You too.